resisting the Holy Spirit. They protested. They, they held out on what he was trying to give them. They stood by the sidelines. They, they exempted themselves. They withstood him. They balked. They prevented his work in themselves. They resisted the Holy Spirit. This is one way that the Holy Spirit is grieved. Jeremiah said these words, or the Lord through Jeremiah, in 32, 33, they have turned unto me the back and not the face. There's a lot of these, a lot of these indictments in the, in the prophets. They've turned unto me the back and not the face. In other words, they ignored him. They turned the back. They neglected what he wanted. They gave no thought to what he said. They looked the other way. They did not allow him to catch their attention. They refused to give audience. They turned the back and not the face. Now back to Stephen in Acts chapter 7, after he had delivered, he delivered a, a sermon to them, think about it this way, that of things they already knew. This was a Jew preaching to Jews about the Jews. They already knew what Stephen said. But he penned them with guilt that they refused to own. They cried out, tried all of them to make more noise, to drown out Stephen. They cried out and stopped their ears. I think of a child. I can't hear you. All levity aside, they stopped their ears so that they couldn't hear. This is the desperation of the flesh is what it is. They stopped their ears and ran upon him. And of course, in order to kill him is what they did. They aggressively opposed him. They stamped out his life, but they didn't stamp out his message. They cut Stephen off from this world, but they cut themselves off from the kingdom in so doing. Luke chapter 7. See, all these examples the Lord has given us, the Lord is commenting on the nature of flesh. This is what flesh is made of. When confronted with the light of the kingdom, this is what flesh does. When confronted with the, the uh, influence of, of divinity, this is how flesh reacts. The Lord has given all these all these examples, Luke 7, verse 30, the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God. That's, that's concerning John the Baptist. They judged God as a liar. They rejected the counsel of God. What kind of person do you reject their counsel? A fool. You reject their counsel because they led you astray. They were a fool. They didn't understand. So you reject their counsel. You see what? Here's, here's man indicting God. They reject the counsel of God. These are things that grieve. They, rule, they threw out his argument. They ruled against God. They numbered God with the fools. They thought Jesus was mad. They actually said this. What a frightful thing. They said this with their mouth. He is mad. Why hear ye him? They found no reason to listen to him. They sold the truth rather than buying it. They rejected the counsel of God. Again, in, Luke, in uh, the, the book of Luke 13, 34, Jesus said, How oft would I gather thy children together, which was Jerusalem, but ye would not. Well, there's a view of the Lord that the Lord just does what he wants in spite of what you want. I don't know what that persuasion thinks of this text. Jesus would have gathered the children of Jerusalem, but they would not. And so he did not. With their own mouth, they said, we will not have this man to reign over us. I thought of John's assessment and his, his gospel. He said, it seems to be a very modest uh, way of putting it, his own received him not. They thought he was not fit to live any longer, to say nothing of following after him or being gathered by him. They thought he was mad. Let none of us think, be tempted to think above ourselves what we ought to think and to think, well, I know the flesh is like this, but I, I would never think that flesh is flesh. It doesn't matter who it's found in. Except for the grace of God, this would still be true of every one of us. Except for the grace of God, it would be true again of every one of us. Because flesh hasn't changed. Amen. 
Psalm 81, 11, but my people would not hearken unto my voice, and Israel would none of me. They did everything they could to be moved, removed from God, from his name, from his remembrance, from his influence. They wanted to have a king like the other like the other nations. They wanted to dress like the other nations. The Lord said, don't cut your beards like the other nations. Because they wanted to be like the other nations. They wanted nothing to do with him. They saw no benefit. Israel would none of me. They considered it no advantage. They found no value in the Lord. In Psalm 78, 41, it says they limited the Holy One of Israel. This is the old covenant way of saying they grieved him. They limited. They tied his hands. Well, we, we, we see this. We can think of uh, one occasion after another in the history of, of the Jews of how they limited God. What God would have done, what God would have gave, what God could have done in them and among them and for them. And they, were, they, they didn't get it because they limited the Holy One of Israel. They closed the door. They stopped up the wells. They, they left God no options. They cut, their, they cut the bands. Hebrews 12, 25 says, See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not him that refused him that spake on earth, how much more shall not we escape if we refuse him that speaketh from heaven? We have these, we have these examples so that we ourselves would fear. Hebrews chapter 10 talks about doing despite unto the spirit of grace. I know there are people today who don't like to talk about these things because they, they don't want to be negative. Well, I, th I think not being sober is a very negative thing. And if, if you don't know there's any danger, you're not very likely at all to be very sober Paul said if Paul was not immune to these things Paul would not have said I do not frustrate the grace of God in Galatians 2.21 if this was a possible danger for the apostle Paul who, who lived so close to the Lord at one time he said whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell he lived so close to the Lord that he said I have lived in all good conscience unto this day can any of us say that? Well, I know I can't. I'm, I'm not going to speak for you, but I know I can't say that. Paul could. He said, according to the law, I was found blameless. Now, if such a one as Paul the apostle could say, I do not frustrate the grace of God, tells me that I'm not, an immu I'm not immune to it either. Even Solomon knew that you don't get a, an, a, an innumerable number of times to be corrected Solomon knew this he had wisdom that was just under the sun and Solomon said this in Proverbs 29 1 he that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy but Solomon knew that no one with, no one with half sense is going to continue and continue and continue without end to give reproof to give warning, to give direction, to give instruction. Not, he's not going to do it forever. Long-suffering and patience and love, it'll go a long ways, but not forever. And so the Lord's doesn't either. Now we have this warning, this exhortation, grieve not the Spirit. <clears throat> this tells me, this tells me something about how the Holy 